We make up our own stories, our own narratives. I've released 39 albums next spring. My Love Hurts is coming out. Yeah, yeah. I'm not touring anymore, I've stopped flying. No. The art will come around now. I've yeah. toured the world, I've got the awards. I don't have another 39 albums to make, mm -hmm. but I have just decided that there's one I want to make. But this is the first album I probably wanted to make because I feel like I just want to. My early work is much more experimental than my later work. As I've grown up, I wanted to make my music more appealing to more a wider variety of people. So like the Basinski and Yannick album, I say is that, you know, I think that's my effort of being the prettiest I can get it so far. What was that process like? Or how did that first come about? I um I make my own things. I make things I I, I mix my own recipes and bake them so that they become magical pies of potential. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of my projects have a copious amounts of information which some people find really interesting, but some people find it overbearing. Don't tell us all about it, Yannick. Art is meant to be the eye of the beholder. Oh, wonderful. If people can put a thing on a wall and people adore it and there's nothing else. I'm amazed. That's powerful. If you go into one of my installations, you can take as it is, or you could go to the poster on the wall. I come from architecture where I had to define and justify every single idea I'd had. So, with William, I was like, I was at a point where I was thinking, oh God, I want to do less. Who does the less best? Well, Basinski. Mm. If I had a tape loop from the 70s and put it on and it decays a bit and people love it. And I, that's powerful. He's very, very good at doing a lot with much, not much. And so we did a small call and response, but over eight years. Wow. Because okay. I'm not in a rush. Yeah. I didn't realize it was over such a... I love things time. gestating and peaking when they should. Mm -hmm. I can rush anything. I can do it. I meet any deadline. Deadlines rule. My whole career has been defined by creating deadlines, opportunities. There's a, there's a competition. Oh, there's a deadline in six weeks. Oh, it's about this topic. Oh, all right then. <laughs> Off I go. Nail it. Bang on. Perfect. The night before all night. William, let's say he's a slow, it's a slow genre, mm -hmm. decay, evolution. So I just let it roll mm -hmm. now and again, see if anything pops up. And eventually it coalesced and, you know, sent it to our label. What was the first thing that was sent? Like what was the first sound that was sent? Do you remember? Um, we, we had a piece of piano noodlings from our archives mm -hmm. and we decided on that as a single source. Yeah. And, um, and then we just ran with it and extemporized and fiddled and tapestried and, until I'd sort of, well, you know, I did most of the composition. Well, my, you know, it is quite busy for a minimalist album. Yeah. But it's only got a small source, so I think that's quite minimal spread across five tracks and then and I think well I think that's a kind of Yannick kind of minimalism it's really a bit like Terry Riley would be on loop Persian surgery dervish surgeries whatever which I loved in the 90s so it's it's a really really busy not muchness nice this is my first effects pedal it's a it's a four second Dodd DFX94. Now I got that for an architecture project. It's a four second loop pedal. And since I found that, it can capture and layer four seconds of loops beautifully without clicks. So it's been the fundamental of all my albums, almost. Let's go up here, which is my two arm version, my portable two arm turntable. So it can go forwards, over there, we've got that there, we've got this here, what's this over here, where's that one coming out, you see? Where does everything come out? Okay, there's a sound coming out. So we can go forwards or backwards. At any speed. 
which I understand is 77 and a half revolutions a minute according to the, anyway, whatever. And you can, but the, of course, the beauty is when you slow something down at any speed, and then I can add reverb to that. And I can pitch shift it down an octave. So it comes that, and I can add crackle or take away crackle. And I can take that sound, trap it in at like a ditto pedal here. So I've got something that I like looping. And then I can do the same over here with this pedal. And I've got two source sounds here running. What, what, do you, what would you say is your favorite album from your career, if you were to pick one? Do you play your own music in the house? Yes. You do? Yes. And, and what, <laughs> what would you say is like the one where you just come, keep coming back to it, if there is one? Oh, for the last couple, few years, it has been on reflection. It's been going around because that's now. And then, you know, a peak, a peak of, I don't know, ones that pop up in my brain right now are Pulled Under, I released myself, which was in 2002. It was my first effort at a studio album with the new laptops, the Pismos, that I had composed on tours in hotel rooms from bits of the concert the night before and putting it all together. Phoenix and Fedra Holding Patterns was one of my best live improvised composition concerts. So I'd kind of sketch out what I'm gonna do in a gig with all these devices and then do it all in front of a lying down audience kind of thing or whatever. What? And, that, and that one was broadcasting to radios set around in, in, on the seat on the laps of people in the audience and using small scale radio, massive scale four corner PAs, using scale and improvise and technology. So you know, and that, that was named after my son, Phoenix. Nice. So, yeah. What sort of proportion of your gigs tend to be like that compared to like playing stuff live? Um, or like, or play, playing live improvisational versus like playing your, your previous mm, works? Mm. Well, only the specific commissions to do specific concerts would come out as more formally structured in my head. Huddersfield Town Hall for the Huddersfield Contemporary Music Festival the one where they're all lying down in the dark on a Sunday night and I come in and there's the organ behind me and I'm playing with the organ sounds in my devices that I've recorded and coalesced and speakers hanging above them, around and behind them. And I, I only, you know, I spend months or weeks and days and nights leading up to it and then I compose the whole flipping thing when I get to the hotel the day before. Yeah. And then I go out the next day and I tell everyone, I set, set the space and then I sit down and in that concert I sat down, everyone's lying on mats. I began with my first sounds. And the caretaker comes walking over to me, ching, 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 with his keys. At the beginning goes, you can start now. <laughs> Thanks, I've already started. And it's in, the, it's in the recording. So, you know, I did a few of those every, you know. Let's you like that it's in there, though? Hmm? Like, does it add to the piece? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's context is everything, yeah. right? And character is the imperfections. I'm me because of all my errors from being a blank human. Yeah. You're you from all your trials, tribulations, potential and hopes and mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I celebrate mistakes. That's not a new concept. You're big on field recordings as well, right? Absolutely. Through the, from, from I think, the architecture, mm -hmm. sight, the sound. Sound creates space. Mm -hmm. Well, that's architecture defines space. Sound creates space, defines it itself. Like, oh, well, it's the same bloody thing. Yeah. So I set off on that path and I embrace atmosphere. All hail people that do things incredibly well. Let's generalize German um, sound engineering or the tone master courses that you learn the technique of how to record an orchestra properly. Wow, amazing, we need that. Thankfully, they've done that work. Now I can go, oh, I don't care, whatever, here we go, throw it in the air, yeah. artfully arranged results. You can break the rules, you feel like. Yeah, make, uh, yeah, bend the rules, someone said, but sure. yeah. yeah. I always turn things around and look from the back. Nice. Different perspectives, like, 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 you know, like this, like, oh, okay, so if I looked at it from this problem from this way around and this way around, then I'd be better informed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's probably a good moment to showcase um, Yannick's new uh, products sort of a product placement, but at the same time, 
I said it vaguely reminded me of the oblique strategies where it's meant to be a creative inspiration, I suppose, would you, would you say? It's a passion project and there's a way of, I mean, it, this started, well, you know, um, it, it collects a lot of my life's thinking and learning, but it really started when I was a children's DJ and, and I was a parent of young children and I wanted them to know about how to access the world of potential. Mm -hmm. So you can get one of these in a small white square that has the question words, who, what, why, where, when, on it, whatever. I came back this summer after holidays with my teenagers and I thought, well, I want to do something more with that. How can I make this my own? So for the last three months, I've been thinking, thinking, thinking all around the topic. And I decided to make an eight-sided one because look, three triangles, right? I've added please mm -hmm. to my question dice. Is please not a powerful question word? Mm. Well, no, it's a different type of word. I so, said, well, can you do anything with please? Because I've toured 30 countries by saying please. So perhaps it's to uh, encourage the user to like ask strongly for something. Well, to explore the potential we have to perceive our, our future, our, our present future. You know, what, mm. what, what can we do? Because we are in a world that has become increasingly more um, nutritious and complex and overbearing. And you think, I don't know, there's I can do about it. Yeah. Well, what we can do yeah. is ask questions. That's what I've got this down to. Nice. We're, we're going to have a guest come on uh, and just uh, have a quick roll okay. of this, see what so, he uh, So, you know, ask me a question based on why you're here on the word that comes up. Okay. It's probably going to be really hard. It doesn't mean it's a failure. It just means that life's not easy. Please. It's a race. Is it please? Yeah. Ah, oh. see, that's a really hard one, isn't it? Yeah. What do you really want to know from me? I guess like what drew you to like music that uh, relies more on tone and atmosphere and scope than like conventional melody. Add the word please. <laughs> yeah. Please. Right. please tell me so, this. It's an excellent question <laughs> and I can give you a copious answer. Yes. I trained as a classical musician. I was good at singing. Somehow I ended up in the church choir in my town in Oakham in the middle of England, small market town and but I was also learning piano and flute so I was quite good at flute I, I played Trois Genopédies by Satie on grade three flute and got a distinction each week I would go to the teacher and <laughs> disappoint them disappoint myself oh okay that's because I didn't practice that's because it was hard oh then it kind of phased out when I was late teens. And then I came to architecture and this space and sound, sound. Sound doesn't have to be music. Well, music doesn't have, music can be sound. Oh, oh, hang on, what? Oh, I really love music. I want to make music, but I don't want to do all that structured stuff. I've never been to arena gigs. I've never followed song lyrics. I just hear the blah, 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 blah. Sometimes dance with me, dance with me, dance with me. Oh, that's a really simple lyric. I love that. And I like to talk a lot, right? I've got a lot to say and write. But the last thing you'd want ever me to catch doing is singing my profound words to you. Oh, that would make me feel awful. Other people go, wow, Bob Dylan. He's just a poet, man. <laughs> I'm like, great. So started off with rejecting the rules, like there's no rules for this, right? Making up my own. Oh, it can never be wrong. No one can tell me my music's wrong again. Out of tune, misplaced notes. If they don't like it, fine. But maybe someone, I don't know. I'm going to try and make some sound collage. Just because obviously what Will's asked there is um, just a more like, I guess sort of a layman's perspective in a way on this on this genre mm. and I think there's probably well hopefully going to be some listeners or you know viewers of this who aren't really into this sort of genre so right obviously that's oh I gotta sell the genre my music is evocative emotional esoteric yeah, big words Yannick but they're all beginning with E I'm trying to do more ease emotional emotional evocative is what I've tried to do with avant-garde music. Yeah. I don't, I don't define myself as new age. Mm -hmm. Do you? 
define me as new age in any way? I I would, but I'm not going to argue with you. No, you know, tell me why. I'm in, so I'm intrigued. Um, just the um, I suppose the sort of drones, big chords, um, a spiritual quality. I don't know if you intend to put that in there, but I I take away from it a spiritual right. quality. Well, that's what my own reason in enjoying my own music is. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, this is, you know, whatever it is, I feel uplifted. Mm. And maybe someone else might too. Another time that comes to mind, I've gone to New York, I played a small show, as I've done there, you know, aiming for those things, curiosity, intrigue, emotion, evocative, da -da. and a lady came, you know, mid-thirties something lady spoke to me afterwards going, well, Yannick, you know, I'm really glad I came today because I, I really needed that. I said, oh, I don't know what she means, but I think she's going through a shit time. Let's say it's about relationships, I'd have a guess. I provided something for her. It's amazing. Do you ever start a project with like a, like a logical concept rather than like a feeling or does that, is that often how, how it starts? Like, do you ever, because you, you're talking about sort of how much meaning there is in the music. Do you ever start from like, not a feeling, but like from, okay, I've got like this, idea, like an idea. So maybe I guess, I've, I've kind of used this um, analogy that, you know, I, I'm not a painter gets up in the morning, thinks I want to paint. So I, I almost never get up in the morning, full stop. Let's say, I no, never normally get up in the afternoon and, uh, and think I want to make a track today. That's quite rare. I have to make a track today because I've got a deadline coming up and this is all about this and this is the piece that I'm going to make for that. That's how I start. It's always with a concept, I'd say. Sure. The results, I want to be a feeling, an evocation, an evocative, evocation of emotion. Yeah. That kind of thing, yes. On a similar topic, what do you think about, are you aware of like people will sleep to ambient music? Well, my answer to that question is, because it's happened, if I'm in a gig and someone starts sleeping, I don't know, snoring, yeah. I consider it a great compliment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... oh, yes. I'm not going to take that as you're bored. I'm going to take that as you're chilled out. Yeah. So you like people feeling comfortable to your music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why they're lying down on mats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a happening. I didn't invent the happening, but I certainly pursued it. You think you can dance to your sort of music? Um, only once. Okay, in your lifetime? Yeah. Okay. I set out wanting to make dance music. I loved Hacienda, dance music, the early 90s, techno is my favorite genre. r &S records were my favorite label back then. I'm gonna make some dance music, because mm -hmm. that's what I wanna do. Oh my God, did I fail. And I'd hear colleagues, friends go, oh, I spent hours on my compressor to get just the right hi-hat. What are they doing? You could get, you could get a better sound out of the ki kitchen drawer. It'd be much more interesting. Yeah. I'm gonna go the kitchen drawer way. My brain did not allow me to follow the rules yeah. of rhythm. Avant-garde, abstract, sound collage art. No rules. Yeah. So what did I do? I failed to make dance music. I made a three-arm record player. How would you describe the uh, emotion of this one? Of this? This, this is just, right well, this going round right now is, because mm -hmm. it's high, it's uplifting, I think, because mm -hmm. it's high, it's not down and it's doomy. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's like, um, it's like I'm, I'm ice skating along a, a cotton type rope through the clouds of, above Mount Zeus. I don't Ooh. know. Yeah, I like that <laughs> a lot. But it sounds slithery up there-ness. Mm. Definitely. We're just going to talk about your new album, uh, Love Hurts, uh, now. So you brought the Indian Shruti box from the process, I assume. I have. Nice, yeah. nice. Do you want to show us how, it's, how, how you use it? Yeah, Love Hurts, H-E-R-T-Z, because, well, you know, um, how, does, how does love and sound hurts combine? I am um, one of the first people to inspire me in my early discoveries about the Avant sound and arts was my flatmate Miles Champion 
took me to Charlemagne Palestine. Do you know Charlemagne Palestine? No, no. He's from New York originally. He was on the fringe, the edge of the original minimalists like Terry Riley and Steve Reich in that era and Morton Subotnick. And he used to use a harmonium. And this is, you know, an Indian instrument. Fixed note reads, vibrate. You can't play a tune on it. It's about long-held drones. Oh, I love drones. Always, always have I loved drones. I think it's that fluidity of space mm. for me. Yeah. So I bought that around then when I was working with Charmaine and we did it. You know, I did an album with Charmaine. I am, wow, yeah. He's a crazy guy. I'm pretty scary. I'm pretty crazy and scary. So we had a great time. We walked around markets and played bells and uh, came into my life around then. And it doesn't seem to have been a common in instrument in the, in the arts, uh, sound arts. So that's about hertz. Yeah. That's vibrations of sound. Pure, wobbly vibrations of sound. And in the last five years, I've been learning an awful lot about the darker side of love. Having, I did 21 years with the love of my lifetime and it came to a point where she had to move on with her life. My life changed as a consequence. And I've learned wisdom, I've learned, I learned many strategies and about being positive and trying to be the change you want to see and, 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 and <laughs> coping with the loss of love. So in facing difficult um, behaviors myself, I wanted to not reflect them back to the person I was facing difficulty with. I wanted to show my children how to behave better in life. The giraffe, I discovered nonviolent communication. When I was through my divorce, I was thinking, how can I, Gandhi said, be the change you want to see. Have you heard be the same change you want to see in your life? Yeah. Because I didn't hear it until I was 40 and I was like, Wow, be the same you want to see. That is, that is actually, that's like, what all you can do is ask questions. It's all about how you and I relate to each other in the moment, you know, what offence I take from your work, the words we use, how we have, like a giraffe, uh, it's the, it represents kindness and compassion because of a large heart. And, uh, you know, you put on your giraffe ears and how I listen to you with kindness and compassion, not accepting insults. Now I'd speak to myself with kindness, thinking I, I am all right, I'm not useless, I'll be nice to myself. Or the jackal is someone that's, you know, the whole of the, the, whole of the political scenario right now, it's someone that bites and banters and puts you down and says you're useless, or all the versions of the negativity. In any given moment, think what would a giraffe do? Our feelings and our needs are the fundamentals that drive everything we do. What's the actual need you're communicating? When someone's shouting at you, are they really saying, please, Yannick, can you not annoy me by being an artist? <laughs> Whatever. If someone's ranting at you, they're actually saying please, but they don't know how to say it, which is why please is also on my dice. Well, a lot of people write breakup albums, don't they? Well, it transpires, looking back, that I may, this may be my breakup album. I think, yeah. harnessed and captured. No lyrics, remember? I'm not gonna whine on about moaning. I'm just gonna give you how I felt. Sure. <laughs> so, it was astonishing, really, because I, you know, I, I started a trilogy of works around that deterioration, decay of love from about eight years ago. And Glitter in My Tears was the first in that trilogy. Um, on Reflection was the second in that trilogy, and they're all monochrome, black and white things. And, and then, I was no longer living in our family home. I was down the road and I received a phone call. It was my wife, still then, phoning to tell me about her new partner. But you know, I, I, I asked her in that call, oh, are you, are you in love with him? I mean, how many times in your life do you get to ask that question to someone you've been with for 21 years, right? You know, it's amazing. Those, these are all amazing moments. Sadness, darkness aside. Yeah. It was an amazing, the whole thing's been, really evolutionary for me. I've harnessed it for better, I hope. And, and then I put down the phone. And then I realized, uh, well, I haven't really grieved this process. She has been the love of my lifetime. We did all the magic, amazing life, wonderful children, have so much big, but it's just gone different now and changed. So then I started to cry, right? Wow, did I revel? 
in the tears. Mm. And what did I do? I grabbed the recordings from this and other things, and I started to write how I was feeling in sound. Like, wow, God. And I write in my text for this work, you know, that it, I was able to revel in that state of dark ecstasy or something, or, a, 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 you know, flip-flop, whatever the words you like. But So I was focused on writing the sound with these things and the, and the organ stuff and using distortion really for the first time as an evocative compositional tool. A lot of my tex textured vinyl works will all have a lot of distortion and because it's all rubbish quality and, and I'll celebrate that, but it comes with the territory. But this time I was applying decay and distortion for emotional effect. And uh, at the end of 10 days, lo and behold, well, I do think this album Love does hurt. It's about vibrations. Of all the albums I've ever made, they, I think I've got to make this. There's a rationale. No one's asking me to. I'm just going to do it. And weirdly enough, the album about love, on reflection, I now listen to, and it makes me all sad. Although it's going to be really pretty. Little pinky pianos. And this one, which is meant to be dark and deep, gives me great uplifting and joy. Like, that's the opposite of what I intended. So it just all came together. Yeah, yeah. And I'm releasing it myself as, as a film of nothing with a soundtrack. With that, no one needs to know about the loss of love in it, really. Mm -hmm. I think it speaks for itself as a, a work Definitely. in a gallery. You don't, if you want to go to the wall and read all about Yannick's sorrow and delight and light, it's there. What, what genre would you define this, al this new album as? Because my concerts and musics can be quite ambiance, mm -hmm. but I do like to rank, rack, rack up the sound in live and really ride those sound, sound drones mm -hmm. in a positive way, not a I'm going to kill you way, but a whoa, here we go way. Mm -hmm. I termed it and I think it relates to this power ambient. Well I said, well, yeah, the power ambient love hurts. The power of ambience. The power is what of what we've been talking about today. Big time. Spring 2024. Yes. Thing. Yes. So it's coming out then. And yeah. as Soul Space, I always ask, um, what is your soul space, basically? Which which means well, what does it mean to you and what would be the place where you feel like you feel most you know, spiritually in touch with yourself? You know, I think it might be within my work. I don't think it's within my family or running around in life or a venue. Um, where, where does my soul lie? I want to cry or dance. Maybe that's, you know, this room here, I have four speakers in here. I have neighbors, but they're just all, there's a road over there, there's no one over there. I can blast in here. This is my sound pool. Full blast at 4 a.m. if I want to cry or if I want to dance. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the sounds that come in? If I want to really, 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 really oomph it, like Schlonger de Love Drone by Charlemagne Palestine, where he plays the church resonation organs with long-held drones all night on Valentine's, or Poppy No Good by Terry Riley, or Music for 80 Musicians by Steve Reich. So this is where you find my soul space. I think we're sat in it. Yo, thanks so much for uh, coming Thank on you, the show. I appreciate it. Thank you.